And in our top business story, all six GCC economies will experience a sharp slowdown this year and over 2017. Although the UAE and Qatar will have outperformed the others, that's according to a new research. BMI Research, in its latest briefing notes, stated that all GCC countries except Saudi Arabia will see growth bottom in 2016 amid public spending cuts, tightening liquidity and widespread investor uncertainty. From 2017, BMI expects that there is to be a notable divergence in growth across GCC states with the UAE and Qatar outperforming and Saudi Arabia lagging behind. The UAE will see a notable pickup in growth next year to 2.8% from the 2016 low of 2.2%, according to the report. In part, this is because the country is more diversified from oil than its GCC peers. For Qatar, huge financial reserves and still strong revenues from the country's gas sector will ensure continued public sector spending ahead of the FIFA 2022 World Cup and ensure the country's growth trajectory remains above that of its neighbours. At the other end of the scale, Saudi Arabia's economic growth is projected to drop from an estimated 3.4% in 2015 to 1.3% by the end of this year and is expected to slow further to 1.0% in 2017. According to BMI, the three other GCC countries will see slow growth in 2017 of 3% for Bahrain, from an estimated 2.9% in 2016, 2.7% for Kuwait from 1.7% this year and 2.5% for Oman from 2.3% this year. Finally, BMI projects that projects the OPEC oil price to average $43.50 per barrel in 2016 and $54 per barrel in 2017. UAE bank earnings are expected to show a drop in the third quarter amid slow lending and dwindling deposits as the low oil prices takes its toll. That's according to estimates by EFG Hermes. The Egyptian Investment Bank estimated that the profit of nine UAE banks it tracks will on aggregate fall by 6% year on year as revenues slow and more money is set aside to cover bad debt. It further added that while the biggest banks have held their own, some of the smaller ones such as Rack Bank and Union National Bank will report slower growth than their bigger counterparts. Margins or the money banks make from interest are likely to be squeezed as there is less money floating in the system and high competition to attract customers. According to the findings, National Bank of Abu Dhabi, the biggest lender by assets in the UAE, is expected to see its third quarter net income fall by 2% to 1.30 billion dirhams from 1.33 billion dirhams, according to EFG Hermes. Rack Bank, the biggest lender to small and medium-sized enterprises in the UAE, is expected to experience a 36% drop in third quarter earnings to 239 million dirhams, according to EFG Hermes. Dubai-based analysts of the bank were quoted in local reports as saying that pressure on spreads is expected to sustain in the third quarter of 2016, as sector data from August suggests that loan growth is, is slowing and liquidity continues to tighten. As digital transformation is set to boost UAE's GDP by nearly $14 billion by 2020, Sharjah Investment and Development Authority Sharuk has signed a memorandum of understanding with leading software giant Oracle to drive the digital transformation of the Emirate using Oracle's cloud applications and software solutions. The announcement was made today on the sidelines of the 36th edition of Jitex Technology Week in Dubai during a signing ceremony between His Excellency Marwan bin Jasim al sarkal the CEO of Sharuk, and Abdurrahman Athayban, the Senior Vice President of Oracle Middle East and Africa. The CEO of Sharuk highlighted that Sharjah is now being recognized as a rapidly growing economic manufacturing and tourism hub across the region and in order to continue attracting FDI across various diverse sectors and lead in today's digital economy. It is vital to be at the forefront of implementing next generation innovation. Sharuk officials stated that Oracle's suite of SAAS solutions have been selected after an exhaustive review and they are confident about the numerous possibilities in terms of achieving its social and economic objectives. Under the strategic collaboration, Sharuk will deploy Oracle's full enterprise resource collaboration, human capital management and customer experience cloud solutions. Although digital transformation is the key for a strong digital economy, officials stress that this has to go along with superior customer experience and reduced IT complexity and lowering costs. 
I think today uh, we are uh, coming up with a new milestone for uh, Shuruq. Shuruq is getting bigger and bigger by the day. We started in 2006 uh, with, a, with a much smaller uh, mandate uh, today and by the time we have reached 2016, uh, Shuruq has many projects all around uh, Sharjah Emirate, which means that we need to have a system and a solution that can fit our purpose and that will make our management uh, in a better way function. Uh, today we have signed with uh, with Oracle the ERP system for cloud, and uh, this is something uh, is a shift for us from one one level to another level. We have uh, a lot of confidence in Oracle and the system that they're going to provide, and we believe that it is for the benefit of uh, of Shuruq's future. So we we have uh, taken this opportunity to be here in the biggest fair around uh, the region, GTX, to announce uh, our partnership here with Oracle. We've been highly committed to the UAE uh, in, in general and for the number of Emirates that we're working with, specifically Sharjah Emirate, we've been working actually with Shuruq to develop uh, Oracle solution of the cloud to address all of the, their, their needs. It's good to see the strategy of Shuruq to address the SME market and to attract investors. We're working with them and we hope our solution will help them to get this rolled out across uh, the Emirate itself and hopefully we can roll it out across the UAE. UAE is considered to be uh, the centerpiece of our uh, uh, focus in terms of, uh, of operation in the region. We have high, wide and big operation in Middle East based in, in Dubai covering all of the requirements and I believe we are highly committed to this and recently we, we stated the announcement of establishing data center in UAE. I believe that itself is a commitment to the country and commitment to the region. We have been very successful actually in being a partner with uh, some cities and government to, to develop smart cities and we have a number of initiatives that we are doing this now with Dubai and the rest of the other cities to share our experience and to leverage the success we did elsewhere and bring it to the country. And Dubai's consumer electronics market size is forecast to grow at 4.7% over the next four years to exceed $3 billion by 2020. That's according to a recent analysis of Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Industry. According to Dubai Chamber analysis, which are based on the latest UAE retail sales data from Euromonitor, the portable consumer electronics subcategory is expected to keep its lead with a 2020 sales forecast of $1.27 billion. The computers and peripherals subcategory is forecast to retain its size at $937 million, whereas in home consumer electronics are expected to gain traction to reach $900 million, while no growth will take place under the in-car entertainment subcategory, with a sales forecast of $23 million. In terms of future growth, in-home consumer electronics is forecast to lead the four subcategories with a compound annual growth rate of 7.6% between 2015 and 2020. And portable consumer electronics is forecast to follow with a CAGR of 6.4%. Market observers indicate that the main trend seen last year in consumer electronic sales is a gradual move towards more compact and multifunctional devices, especially those that offer internet connectivity with consumers' lifestyles becoming increasingly highly mobile and fast-paced. As a result, items such as tablets and smartphones are enjoying solid growth in sales. The analysis attributed the increased figures to Dubai's young population and their interest in latest innovations, with many gadgets such as smartphones, tablets and smartwatches viewed as a status symbol.